Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to some more Farthest Frontier tips and tricks for you guys. So today I'm bringing you some stuff that are some of the most frequently asked questions or pieces of advice people are always asking for over on Discord, Reddit, and across other social medias. So kick back, relax, and let's talk about a few things that everybody is always asking about. Let's start off with apiaries. So apiaries are a little bit of a strange one that a lot of people don't seem to grasp how to uh, use them just because it's not clear exactly how you're supposed to uh, utilize these guys. So apiaries like a lot of things that have to do with like crops and flowers and stuff like that. You want those types of locations where you're going to place them. They also don't really like a lot of overlap. You can overlap them a little bit but don't overlap them by a large degree. As you can see right here, I have two apiaries. This is about the extent of the overlap that you can really get uh, before you'll start losing. Uh, the most I've really gotten is around like 13, 14 honey and maybe like 10 to 11 wax. I I've gotten that before when I was playing around with testing some different stuff. You aren't going to get a lot, which is why you need multiple of these things. Now, in terms of where you want to place them, it's actually pretty obvious when you're placing them down. Look for areas that are highlighted in yellow. The more yellow it is, the more the bees will like it. So you'll see that bees really like parks and gardens. They love it. Garden decorations and the small parks, especially the upgraded versions, seem to give a huge bonus for the bees. You can see we got about a 65, 70-ish percent bonus down over there. Down here where I place these, right now you'll see it's a 45%. That's because it's overlapping significantly. We get over here, it's about 47, 48. Down over here, about 55, 56. Over here with our orchards and stuff, we can get about 65 or so. So bleep, just kind of keep an eye where you're placing your apiaries and look for those bright yellow areas that you can put them. Now, there is one thing I should note, and there is uh, there seems to be a misconception that orchards benefit from apiaries, and I have not seen that in my uh, analysis. Apiaries will benefit from orchards. Once the orchards are established and flowering, when they're still early in their life cycle, they don't. But later on, as they are a little bit more mature, they will start benefiting the apiary some. Now, the highest I've been able to get these is around 80 something percent. If you can get higher, I would love to hear that down in the comments and just let me know, you know, how you kind of achieve that. Did you just have a, literally a giant, just a giant thing of gardens? I, I imagine you could just a massive thing of decorative gardens with apiaries in there would most likely get you well above 80 percent on your apiaries. So has this ever happened to you? So you build your first schoolhouse and it goes unfilled and you and no one's working there and you can't get it to fill up. So what has happened is your starting basic education person has either gone into another job or if you got super unlucky, maybe he died to an early wolf attack. I have had that happen. Uh, so it's actually really easy to fix. You're going to go under your profession window. You can do that by clicking the profession, the uh, population or hitting P on the keyboard. And what you want to do is click the magnifying glass next to the uh, different jobs that currently have people in them. What you're looking for is someone who says education basic. There he is. So, or she is rather, Alia is over here being a hunter and she has basic education. So what I'm going to do is unassign her as a hunter. Now she's just a laborer. We're going to go over to the school and we're going to click fill. And now Alia is working over at the school. Now, just don't forget that wherever you took the people off of the jobs, put someone back in there. Make sure you fill that job back in so someone is working at that building. But now your school has a person working there. Now, if you don't have any basic education people because maybe of an early wolf attack or a bear attack and they killed your basic education person, all you can do is wait. The game will send you an educated person in a group of immigrants within a year or two. So if you've lost your person with basic education, unfortunately, all you can do is wait. But if you haven't lost anybody, just look around for them, find them and put them into the building. So all of the farmers that you have in your city are part of a collective pool. 
starting from your first farmer on the very first field that you build, going up to the second field and beyond. Every time you assign another farm to be built, it creates a new farmer, and that new farmer, plus any old farmers you have, will continue to till and build new fields. None of those fields are specifically assigned to a single farmer or group of farmers. It's all a collective shared pool. All of your farmers will tend to all farms and all apiaries that you currently have. Now, one way to make sure that your farmers aren't uh, being overworked is to make sure you're staggering crops. And by that, I mean taking a look and seeing what is being harvested when. As we can see here, I've got a harvest of peas coming in uh, at the end of the uh, springtime. I don't have another harvest until late fall or early fall, rather, for the rye. Then I'm going to have kind of an early-ish fall, late summer harvest for the beans, and then a early summer harvest for the carrots. And then over here, again, another. Now, this is a double harvest, so we're going to have to have our farmers working a little extra to get this harvest of rye in before the cold weather sets in. But that's called staggering your harvest. You want to try to stagger those out and not have too many harvests uh, that are overlapping that might overwork your farmers. Now, one cool, interesting thing about this system, since it is a collective pool, is that you can get away with having fewer farmers than the game tells you you need. I have not exactly figured out the exact number. I'm playing around with 20 right now. Right now, I'm going to try 20 workers out of the 31 it says I need and see if all of my rye comes in. That's the key I'm looking for. That's when I have a lot of harvests at the same time is when my rye comes in on those two fields. So I'm interested to see if 20 farmers can handle all of that harvest plus all the apiaries. And I do have some more farms down here. We've got some maintenance going, but maintenance is secondary to harvests. I don't have any harvests there. I've got some beans, but that's shortly that will be done before the rye. And then I've got some turnips actually too right over here. So. I'm kind of playing around to see if 20 farmers will be enough. If I see any crops rotting on the fields, that tells me that I need to add a couple of more in. But we have found that you don't have to have the exact number of farmers that the game tells you that you need. It is a little variable, and a lot of it is going to depend on your specific setup. So... As you're building your farms out, lower the number of the workers by a few at a time until you find that sweet spot where you have just enough farmers to maintain your fields and free up some of that workforce to do other jobs around your city. Now, here's one that people have been yelling at me for. And yes, I will go ahead and say I, 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 I was wrong. OK, I was wrong. I'm sorry. I apologize. Please accept my forgiveness and my undying gratitude for pointing this out to me. Plazas can be built under roads. There. I said it and I'm right. Okay. Plazas can be built under roads, specifically the small plaza. Uh, and it even says in the text, small plazas can be placed under roads. Would you look at that? <laughs> so this is actually kind of neat. These can be placed underneath your road tiles. Now they don't show up, which is why I thought it was a bug because I don't read tooltips all the time. And I thought it was a bug because why have a decoration that's hidden? But apparently you can do this. You can place these guys underneath your roads and hide them under there and they can still be upgraded. It is a little annoying though if you have them in there and you want to upgrade dirt roads to cobblestone roads because you can't select your dirt roads because the plazas are in the way. So you got to delete one to upgrade the road, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, now, what is kind of cool is these do stack. As you can see right here, this is red because I already have plazas underneath these roads. But if I go, well, let's take it away. You see it's at 112. If I put this right here, it will stack. It does stack. Normally, these, this kind of stuff does not stack. We see right here, we've got a, is this a medium statue? That is a medium statue. Normally, stuff does not stack. As you can see, I'm not getting any additional desirability from adding another statue right here. However, small plazas, at least at the time of this recording in patch 0.7.5e, do stack. So you can line all of your roads around your houses with small plazas and get a nice little boost. 
As long as the plaza tile shows up green on the house, then you are going to get that desirability boost and you're going to be able to uh, stack that on there. So place small plazas underneath your roads around your houses and get a nice significant boost to your attractiveness or your desirability rather to your homes. Decrease the size of your herds in your barns. There's really no reason to have it maxed out. Maxed out herds uh, tend to go through food a lot faster. So I like to try to have between eight and 10 in my barns. Eight to 10 is like a nice place. Uh, a couple of people have said that eight is a sweet spot for them. I've tried eight, works well too. I'm play playing around with 10 right now just to see how it does. But eight to 10 cows in your barns is a good spot for uh, ensuring a good healthy herd size and they will still produce about two to three bir uh, births per year. So that means that on a size 10 herd, you'll get about two births per year. That means you'll get two uh, slaughterings per year and produce a fair amount of food. So decrease those herd sizes, save yourself some ex some fodder from the winter from your grains and your root vegetables, and ensure that you have a good steady supply of meat, tallow, milk, and pelts coming in. So we all know that the arborist is for fruit trees. You place fruit trees within the range of the arborist and he goes and tends to them and then will pick fruit from them on occasion and take them home. But did you know that you can place fruit trees anywhere you want and villagers will come and pick fruit from them? That's right. You can place everyone's favorite little fruit trees anywhere you want in your settlement. People will go and get fruit from them. They don't have to be tended to by an arborist. They will still produce fruit and they will still function as a regular fruit tree, but people will go and pick from them. So I like to place fruit trees scattered throughout my settlement. You can see I've got a couple right here outside the gate. I've got a few over in this area near these industries, and I've got some scattered randomly around my town centers and, and some different places over here. Just giving my people an extra source of food I was hoping to find someone who was actually going and picking some fruit, but I haven't seen anyone do it uh, lately, but they will go and pick that. So pretty cool little extra little feature, if you will, of fruit trees that you may not know about. So place those fruit trees around randomly, leave some space for them, and you can give your people some fresh fruit that they can go and pick by themselves and take home. That's going to last a long time in storage and not have to worry about getting it all perfect with a setup with the arborist. Medicinal roots are one of those hard to find goodies around the map that people just love to get. The fun thing about medicinal roots is they actually help your people heal themselves faster than just herbs. So if you have medicinal roots, you can actually get away with not having to build a healer's house for a little while. Now, building a healer's house comes with additional benefits, such as uh, having the desirability effect. But if you disable the building to try to save the monthly cost, then you lose the desirability effect. So it's kind of a loss loss there. So if you're short on cash, but you have medicinal roots, you can get away with not having to have that building for a little while. You still will eventually want a healer's house, especially once you get things like smallpox and bubonic plague. Uh, you want people bedded for that in a healer's house or a hospital upgrade uh, and not sitting around in their homes, spreading their nasty diseases to everybody else. But with medicinal roots, you can get away with not having to build that building right off the bat. The last thing to talk about real quick are beans and peas. Everybody's favorite beans and peas. A lot of people always ask, you know, do I need to grow greens uh, because I need to get rid of scurvy? The answer is no. Beans and peas in, for the game data for diseases count as greens. Now, they are separated into their own category of food, which is beans. However, they do count to help prevent scurvy. I don't grow any greens on any of my farms. I gather some greens uh, out in the wild, but I don't have many. Beans and peas are the main, uh, the mainstay of my greens production, and I never have scurvy outbreaks because of that. So if you have a lot of scurvy, I would recommend beans and peas. Cabbage and leeks have a huge negative fertility impact, whereas beans and peas, because they are a nitrogen enriching food crop, will increase the soil fertility. 
So that is why I always recommend having beans and peas in your crop rotations uh, because they help with fertility and they help prevent scurvy. All right, guys, that's it for me. Just a few more tips and tricks, uh, especially these are some of the most most asked questions and pieces of advice people are looking for, especially on Discord and Reddit. I see this stuff pop up all the time. Uh, now, next video coming is one that you guys have voted on, and that is going to be a video about t travel times and efficiency. So look for that over the next couple of days as I put that video together and get all of the information together for you guys. But until then, I hope you enjoy this video. If you have any other tips and tricks, leave them below. I do like to collect tips and tricks from people, and if uh, they're really good tips, I will include them in a future video. So with that, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.